Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I'm the artist behind the brand Point Brush. Today I'm tackling a very requested topic which is a behind the scenes tour of my studio and workspace. Before we get started, please take a minute to hit the subscribe button. It's a small thing you can do to help support this channel and helps me um, create more amazing content for you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen snippets of me um, painting at my desk, but today I'm going to be taking you through the entire tour of my studio and workspace. So that's going to start at my desk and I'm going to take you through to the office where I do all the scanning and computer work for everything. Um, and so, yeah, I really want to show you guys how and where everything gets created. And hopefully that might give you some ideas for how to organize your workspace or your desk as well. Let's dive in. I'm going to take this camera off the tripod and take you through it all. So first of all, I'm going to take you through where I paint. And that is at my desk right here in, believe it or not, which is my bedroom. And so I really like painting in here because the natural light here is ideal for painting. And I keep my desk right in front of these French doors because the light, again, is really good here. But speaking of my desk, it's actually not a formal desk, but it's actually a work table that I bought from the hardware store. And it folds in half. And what I do is I put this vinyl covering that has a marble pattern on top of it. It to cover the table and I use that to make the table a little bit prettier with staging and when I'm filming my my process for social media so I have this cover which makes the presentation so much more professional as you can see. And one of the reasons why I bought such a lightweight work table is because I move the desk a lot. So I usually move it over there to this window for YouTube, um, any kind of video work, and then back over here to these French doors to, to actually paint on. So the table gets moved around quite a lot. On my desk at any given time, I usually have these objects. I usually have this silver tray, which I got in an antique store, and I usually keep different paints on here, whether it's gouache or watercolors. I sometimes use the tray also to shuttle around my palettes if I'm taking them to the kitchen to be washed. I also have this little ceramic um, container where I keep paper towels, uh, which I use a lot when I'm doing specifically watercolor painting. I have these swatch cards that I made myself. They're sort of quick reference guides for me of every single color that I have both in tube and in pan format. And let me know in the comments if you are interested in learning more about that. I also have a bowl, which I picked up at an antique store with this beautiful cut glass motif and some brushes, of course. Um, if you want a full list of my supplies, I have some videos about that, which I will link below. So I have those right here and then more of the brushes in this, uh, this container, which is a part of a mason jar container. And that's sitting on my desk at all times. Next up are my palettes. And I know I'm pretty well known for using pretty plates as palettes. I collect them and I just love having beautiful objects on my desk at all times. So I actually use a plate per project. And that's because I'm a commercial artist, I need to keep all my paints uh, and all the colors I use for various projects separate from one project to the next. So for example, for this Firebird motif um, project, I'm putting all the colors on one particular palette so I know that I can always keep those separate and all my colors are isolated for that project and I won't get it mixed up with another project. And that keeps me organized and um, is a very efficient way to work for me. Next up on my table, I have my task lamp. And this is actually a really cool lamp, which has a built-in light ring on one side. So you can see right here, it um, has a ring which lights up when I turn it on. And then there's a little window where I can put my smartphone or even my smaller camera and rest it right there. And it films through that window so you get some really great overhead bird's eye view shots for Instagram and here on YouTube. Moving on, we have my tripod, which I use a lot for both videography as well as photography. And I'll link some of these products in the description below in the event that you're interested in learning more about them. Next up, we have this little basket that I keep to the side. And this is my basket where I keep all the different papers that I have. So from my Arches hot press watercolor papers to Bristol paper, layout paper, tracing paper, any kind of paper you can think of, I keep it in this little basket right here to the side. So next up, I have my chest of drawers right here. At the top, I keep some reference books usually. I also have my wooden mannequin, which I affectionately named Rudy. And so the top three drawers are for clothes and the bottom two are for point brush. 
So let me take you through the first of the two, which is my tech drawer. And this is where everything related to cameras, lighting, um, all that kind of tech stuff is in this drawer. So I have power strips, power cables, this is my small Lumix camera that I use for video recording overhead shots. And for my main camera, I have a Canon EOS R, which is my life. I love this camera. It is such a workhorse and I have a lot of different lenses for it. So depending on what I'm doing and what I'm filming or photographing, I'll use different lenses, um, varying sizes and um, focal lengths as well. And that's it for that drawer. Um, the next one is my styling drawer. And this one has everything that I use for styling my shots, for presenting my work. And as you've probably noticed by now, I really put an emphasis on always um, presenting my work in as professional way as possible. I like to keep these items all very handy. So as I'm working, I can always reach for them and just integrate them into my process. Then we have my Paintmobile. And I call it my Paintmobile because it's on wheels and it's this little caddy that I can wheel around as I like. It has three tiers, so I divvy up my supplies based on the tier. So the top tier is for my watercolor paints. And I have uh, everything I need for watercolors on the top level. And I've used these little recycled containers to help separate my paints by color. So all my pinks and purples are in this one tray. Then I have all my oranges and browns in another tray. And so that keeps things really organized. And not to sound like a crazy obsessive person or anything, but because I work really fast and I have a lot of projects at a time, it's very important for me to be able to always be able to find exactly what I need within a couple of minutes so that I can keep the ball rolling and just be a lot more productive during my process. And so here on my right, I have my glue pen, which I use for gluing down sequins as well as glitter and all sorts of other sparkly things that I keep in these tiny containers. Um, and I just have a lot of different colors that you know sparkle and that I add on my paintings. Then the next tier down, I have all my my gouache and gouache acrylic paints. And these I organize in a very particular way. So I stand them up um, in these shoe boxes and I add these little dots of the paint that's inside to the top of every cap. And what happens here is that I can really easily see exactly what colors I have from a bird's eye view. And again, that helps me move very fast and keeps me really organized. So I have all my blues in one area, my greens in another area. So I never have to spend a lot of time looking for the exact shade of blue that it is I'm looking for at that time. I also have my Micron pens, which I use quite frequently as well in both my gouache work as well as in my sketchbook. Then on the third level of the caddy, it's essentially just everything else. So I have my um, metallic paints, my metallic uh, acrylics from Golden, which I use a lot. Iridescence, um, also interference colors, which are kind of shimmery reds and greens. And then I have my bronze powder. I also have nail polish, which I sometimes use on some of my work too, to give it that extra little sparkle. And then this box that has uh, just everything else, a bunch of odds and ends from palette knives to to extras of like acrylics, even like little pieces of lace or covers for different jars. I just, just other things that I don't use as often go into this last little box. So that's it for this room. Um, and so I'm gonna take you to the office next, which is where I do all the digital side of point brush and all of my work. Uh, and right here on my left, I have a couple of my paintings, some of the originals that are framed in the, um, in the hallway. And so let's go to the office next. And so here is the home office that I share with my husband, Steve. And so my desk is the one closest to the camera right now and our desks face each other. So because he works on the logistics and the business end of things and I work on the creative, we're often just bouncing ideas off each other and working together throughout the day. And so for my desk, uh, I usually have, I usually keep it really minimal with not many things going on on my desk, but I always have my keyboard, obviously, as well as my Wacom tablet. And I use my Wacom tablet for all of my work. I actually don't use a mouse at all. And that's because really early on in my career, I started using a Wacom tablet and just felt that I had so much more control using it than I do with a mouse. So I just stuck with it and that's what I use now. I use uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, and the 
entire Adobe Creative Suite uh, to do all the digital processing of my artwork, as well as Adobe Premiere for video editing. So everything gets done at this computer right here. And yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty fortunate to have a really great view out the window as well of this gorgeous Japanese maple tree that changes color every season. So in the fall, it becomes a beautiful, bright, fiery red. Um, and then right behind me, I have a couple of prints of my patterns, the bodies of ballet and colors of ballet prints that I, I love so much. And I'll swing right around and take you to the uh, designer's bookcase right here, which is, I call it the designer's bookcase, but it's basically just a bookcase that has all of our paper swatches and all sorts of different tools that I use for specking papers or ink swatches and things like that that relate to the design um, area of the business. So you'll see that I have a lot of like different paper swatch books right here, um, some binders that have other uh, items in there for organization. And on on the top shelf right here, I have these two boxes that are filled with my most recent work, which I keep inside there just to help keep it protected. And then to the right, this is my pile of work that still needs to be scanned. So I scan everything that I paint, everything that I create to bring it to the computer, which allows me to create these beautiful products and tons of different things that I can do and to post on social media. And so speaking of different products, uh, right behind Steve's desk, I have a selection of some of my favorite travel um, art prints. And so this wall just brings me so much joy. I just love looking at it um, when I come into the office in the morning and just seeing all the different parts of the world. And um, these are part of my permanent collection of art prints. And then finally, to the left of those prints, um, we have our trusty scanner and printer. And we use Epson for all of our scanning and all of our printing. Um, and yeah, it's a just general all-purpose scanner. I think hopefully one day we can upgrade the scanner to something a little bit better. But for now, it works. And that's pretty much it. I have a couple of other things that I keep in storage um, in my basement or in my garage, but um, for the most part, I keep everything that I use regularly at my fingertips. And that's because it's always really important to have it right there and accessible so that you're never having to fumble around for a brush or a pad of paper, um, and that you can really keep that creative process going. So anyway, let me know if this video was useful, if perhaps it gave you some ideas for how to organize your desk or your workspace space. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.